Wake up! Wake up, wake up, wake up! Up you wake, up you wake, up you wake, up you wake! A Fall from Grace is the latest disaster from Tyler Perry. He's most known for his Medea character and his Medea movies, but I found those films to be very boring because of how unfunny they are. His dramas, on the other hand, are fucking hilarious. They're a riot. Almost two years ago, I said fuck it and went to go see Acrimony starring Taraji P. Henson. And oh my god, what a calamity. The crowd was laughing at the movie. I was laughing at the movie. At the end, someone yelled, that's it? I honestly felt bad for Taraji because Acrimony is so bad, it's embarrassing, and she's too good for that movie. You remember that joke Tina Fey made at the Golden Globes like five years ago? Tyler Perry was so good in Gone Girl that he has actually been asked to write and direct a sequel called Girl, I Thought You Were Gone. Well, he actually did it. He went around saying it took him nine days to film as if that's a good thing, which is an absurdly short amount of time, and it looks like it. Like I said, embarrassing. The same year, he came out with Nobody's Fool, which was a comedy, but it had enough serious moments that were unintentionally funny that I got something out of it. With that in mind, A Fall From Grace is not a fall from grace for Tyler Perry. Actually, it's another moment of a continuous fall for a bad filmmaker. Oof, this movie is bad. This movie has all the same problems that Acrimony has. Has. It's predictable, its dramatic moments are poorly directed so they end up being hilarious, otherwise strong actors are made to look silly or ridiculous, and the production quality is appalling. The way this film is written is so fucking lazy. Instead of doing what good films do, which is to write scenes that show what the characters feel, imply what the characters feel, show them confronting obstacles, show them being challenged, A Fall From Grace only tells you these things, and it tells you these things through what is basically narration. There's an interrogation scene that lasts the entire movie as a framing device in the film, but it's such a piss poor cover for just wanting to write down the protagonist feelings instead of actually trying to explore them in the movie, and the words themselves aren't even written well. There's no poetry or any attempt to write anything substantive to keep the audience's attention and give them something to think about. The narration goes two ways. Either the protagonist explains a couple of scenes and then says, this is the best day of her life, or she's never been happier in her whole life, or she'll explain a scene and then say this is the worst day of her life, or she's never felt worse in her whole life. I'm not kidding, if you took a shot every time one of those platitudes is said in this film, you'd probably die. Tyler Perry recently put this video on his Instagram of all the things he wrote last year, and he says it's because he has work ethic, which is fine, but when you're writing things that are as paper thin as this, it's really not that impressive. If you wrote 20 marriage stories, or 20 the lighthouses, or 20 knives out, I'd be like, damn Tyler Perry, that's crazy work ethic you got there. But he didn't, and we're stuck with movies like like this that feel like they were written in one draft and never touched again. And I don't care if there were multiple drafts for this script, it doesn't feel like it. It feels like someone wrote this movie and were like, oh, I got all the scenes. The proposal scene is a masterclass and so bad that it's good filmmaking. They hadn't really established through the acting or writing that the protagonist was ready to commit her entire life to this person, but she's like, yeah, let's do it because we need to get to the murder part faster. In this same scene, there are a million CGI fireflies, and it's so bad. I really don't believe people saw this in the editing room and were like, that's good enough. That looks good. It's fine. That's completely fine. And there are so many more things in this movie that give you secondhand embarrassment for everyone involved. Like, in the beginning of the film, one of the protagonists is driving and she's listening to the radio, which is happening because Tyler Perry thought that would be a clever way to give more exposition, even though that same information is given many times throughout the movie. But more importantly, who listens to the radio? I mean, with music streaming, podcasts, and being able to get your news on the internet, what person that is the same age as this character is earnestly listening to the radio for news? I'm not saying those people don't exist. I'm saying the likelihood that this character is one of those people is very slim. Makad Brooks's wig is so bad. It's so bad. I know, wig. I feel that already.
If there was ever an example of an unconvincing wig, it's this one. I mean, I know in real life he's bald because I've seen him in other things, but you could look at his forehead and then look at his wig and think to yourself, hey, that's not where his hairline starts. It shines in an unconvincing way, and like this wig, the editing is choppy, purposeless, it just looks thrown together. The old man in the diner scene is persistently looking right into the camera. The score is manipulative, in poor taste, and uninspired. The way this film is lit is just as lazy as the writing, the wigs, the editing. It looks like they just put lights in a spot where you can get an outline of an actor or an object, and just left it there without shaping it or diffusing it in a way that doesn't look like they just threw some lights down. The courtroom set and all of the other sets are so unconvincing, I laughed every time we were shown a new location. The walls don't look aged at all. Everything in camera looks like a set and not like a place where people live or work. Like, it's cool and all that Tyler Perry has the largest physical studio in the country, but when you're not doing anything to it that makes it look real, it's just lame and bad. The bad lighting that I mentioned earlier doesn't help with that either, but also the fact that this film was shot on digital really highlights how artificial and cheap everything looks. You know, I have an internal conversation with myself every once in a while wondering if digital is just as good as film, but seeing this film and recently going back and seeing 2000s rom-coms that were shot on film, those films hold up visually better than this one, and it really proves that if you don't know what you're doing, digital is a supremely inferior format to film. I really can't find a more appropriate word than embarrassing. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Its dramatic moments are hilarious, the presentation is cheap and bad, and it's an embarrassing piece of work. But hey, I appreciate Tyler Perry for giving black actors and artists work and getting them out there, even if under his direction, it has the same utility as Days of Our Lives or General Hospital. So I have a question for you. Why are you pushing so hard to have my son tested? Tested for what? And I'm giving Tyler Perry's A Fall From Grace a 2 out of 10. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you agreed or disagreed, tell us in the comments. Share with your friends. Subscribe. Do all the things. The Matrix video is happening. I swear to God, it's happening. Okay? Alright. bye bye You're gonna sky. Big. <gasps> Snatch. Snatch. Slow. Slow. Out the door. Oh it's my. in Arkansas.